in the last video, we presented and we discussed the two formulas in probability, which are the additive rule and the complementary rule. Now, in this video, we shall discuss the next three formulas of probability, which are called the conditional probability and the multiplicative rules for dependent events and the multiplicative rules for independent events. So for the understanding of conditional probability, let us consider the following scenario. In a standard deck of cards, a card is drawn. So a single card is drawn. What is the probability that the card selected is an ace? So since a single card is drawn, the sample space would be the 52 playing cards. So the probability that the card selected is an ace would be four out of the 52 playing cards. Since we know that in the standard deck, there are four aces. Now, if I tell you that the card selected is not a face card, what is the probability that the card selected is an ace? We know that uh, an ace card is not a face card, but you were told that the card selected is not a face card. So if the card is not a face card, then we shall remove the face cards from the outcomes of the sample space. So our sample space now is not any more 52. No, it's just 40 because we have to remove the 12 face cards. So the 12 face cards are the four jack cards, the four queen cards, and the four king cards. So we shall remove those 12 cards from the sample space. So removing those would mean that our sample space will have 40 cards. And the probability that the card selected is an ace would be 4 out of 40. So in this second illustration, we actually applied conditional probability. So usually when we apply conditional probability, we need to reduce no, the outcomes of the sample space. No, because we already know some events that uh, already happen. So in this case, we, we, we were told that the card selected is not a face card. So that's the condition. We already know that that event, you know, that the event that the card is faced will not happen. Okay? So that's why the probability is 4 over 40 instead of 4 over 52. So formally, this formula, you know, the probability of an event B occurring when it is known that some event A has already occurred is called a conditional probability. And this is denoted by the following symbol. So P of B, vertical line A, the vertical line indicates that we're using conditional probability. And it's read as the probability of B given A, or it can be that the probability that the event B will happen given that event A already happened. Now the probability of B given A is defined in the following equation. So it's equal to the probability of the intersection of B and A divided by the probability of, of A. Okay, so let's have an example. Suppose our sample space S is the set of fourth-year high school students in a small town who took the UP college uh, assessment test or college entrance examination. Let us categorize them according to gender and whether they pass or not. So as you can see, the frequencies are given in this contingency table. So the questions are, find the probability that a student is a male given that he passed the exam. And letter B, find the probability that a student failed the exam given that she is a female. Okay, so for letter A, we're looking for the probability that the student is a male. So let's represent this by M, given that he passed the exam. So passing the exam, let's represent this by, let's say, B. Okay, so I'm not using P because P is reserved for probability. So since the keyword says given that, this means that we're looking for the probability of M given P. So we're using the conditional probability formula. So according from the formula, it is the probability of M intersection B 
divided by the probability of the condition. Okay, so from the contingency table, the probability that the student is a male and pass the exam is 30 out of 230. So this is the number of males, no? the, num the number of males who pass the exam. So that's 30 over 230. So that's your P of M intersection B. Now this will be divided by the probability of B, which is the probability that the student pass the exam. So the probability that the student pass the exam regardless of gender is 55 out of 230. Because the number of students who passed, regardless of gender, is 55. So the denominator will be 55 over 230. So applying algebraic solutions, we're getting 30 over 55 for this item. Now for letter B, let's find the probability that a student failed the exam. So let's uh, represent this by F. Uh, given that she is a female, so let's use, uh, let's say, A for female because we already use the letter F for male. Okay, so again, this is conditional probability. So we have P of F given A. So the probability that the student failed given that the student is a female. So according from the formula, it is the probability of F intersection A divided by the probability of A. Okay, so again, using the contingency table, the probability that the student is uh, failed and uh, a female at the same time is actually 65 over 230. And then the probability that the student is a female is 90 over 230. So again, using algebraic solutions, we have 65 over 90 for this item. Okay, so this is actually the long method no, using a contingency table. But uh, whenever the contingency table is given, we can actually just inspect the contingency table no, to determine the, the probability. So uh, going back to example A, if we're looking for the probability that the student is a male, given that uh, he passed the exam. So that means we're already considering, uh, uh, we, we're just only considering those students who passed the exam because we already know that the student passed the exam. So if the student passed the exam, instead of using 230 as uh, our sample space, we're just using 55. Okay, so that's why we have the denominator here as 55. And then out of this 55, how many are males. So out of this 55, there are 30 males who pass. So that's why the probability is 30 over 55. Now for letter B, uh, the condition is that the student is a female. So since we already know that the student is a female, now we're going to consider only the female students. So which means that instead of using 230 as our sample space, we're going to use only the 90 females as our sample space. And then out of these 90 females, how many failed the exam? And from this table, it shows that it is 65. So that's why our probability is 65 over 90. Okay. So next is the multiplicative rule formula. Uh, whenever event B depends on event A. So this formula is actually... Uh, obtained from the conditional probability formula. So recall that whenever we have the probability of B given A, it's equal to the probability of B intersection A divided by the probability of A. So if we multiply both sides by P of A, we get P of A times P of B given A, which is this one, and then at the right side of this uh, equation, multiplying the right side by P of A will cancel out the P of A, and we only have the probability of B intersection A. Now, using set uh, properties or set properties, B intersection A is actually the same as A intersection B. Okay, 
So as you can see in the formula, we first find the probability of A, and then we next find the probability of B given A. But the probability of B depends on what happened though, in event A. So that's why uh, in here, in this multiplicative rule formula, it says event B depends on event A. So let us illustrate this with an example. Suppose that we have a fuse box containing 20 fuses of which five are defective. So let's suppose that this is our fuse box and then we have 20 fuses. We have defective fuses and working fuses. So we have five defective and 15 defective fuses. Now we're supposed to get two fuses. So if two fuses are selected at random and removed from the box in succession without replacing the first. So the statement without replacing the first means that we're going to select the first fuse and we're not supposed to return it. And then we're going to select the second fuse. So which means the probability for the second fuse would depend on the type of fuse obtained in the first selection. So that's why the second fuse, no, the event of getting a defective second fuse no, will, um, is affected no, or will depend on the, the type of fuse obtained from the first selection. Okay. So the question is, what is the probability that both fuses are defective? Okay. So let's uh, let no, the following no, D1 as the event that the first fuse is defective. And then D2 is the event that the second fuse selected is defective. So which means if, we're, if we want that both fuses are defective, that means we're looking for the probability that the first fuse is defective and the, the, that the second fuse is defective. So that's P of D1 intersection D2. So by the multiplicative rule, this is equal to the probability that the first fuse is defective multiplied to the probability that the second fuse is defective provided that the first fuse is defective. Okay, so using the, our information from the problem, what is the probability that the first fuse selected is defective? So out of the 20 fuses, we will count the number of defective. So there are five defective fuses out of the 20 fuses. So that's the probability of D1. And then we multiply this to the probability that the second fuse is defective, provided that the first fuse selected is defective. Now, since the selection is without replacement, then that means in the second selection, there are only 19 fuses left. And out of those 19 fuses, there are four defective fuses because one of the defective fuses is already selected in the first selection. So that's why this second factor here is 4 over 19. And in this case, this is equal to 20 over 380. So this is an application of the multiplicative rule in which event B depends on event A. Okay, now let's have an, another example. Nico is punctual for his test four over five of the time or four fifths of the time. If he is punctual, he obtains a high score 75% of the time. So what is the probability that he will be punctual and obtain a high test score. So in this problem, there are two events. Miko being punctual, so let's represent it by A, and Miko getting a high score. And let's uh, represent this by H, okay? So the probability of A is actually four over five. That's the probability that Miko is punctual for his test. And then the probability that Nico obtains a high score given that he is punctual. So why am I saying given that? Because in the statement, it says if 
he is punctual. So this if means a condition. So this probability here of 75% is a conditional probability. So that is the probability that Nico gets a high test score provided that Nico is punctual. So 75% is actually 0 0.75. Okay, now the question is, what is the probability that he will be punctual and obtain a high test score? So the word and means we're getting the intersection. So we want to know the probability that Nico will be punctual and obtains a high test score. Okay, so now using the multiplicative rule, the probability of A intersection H is equal to the probability of A multiplied to the probability that Nico gets a high test score provided that Nico is punctual. And this is equal to P of A, which is 4 over 5 multiplied to 0.75. Okay, so 4 over 5 multiplied to 0.75. And this is actually equal to 3 fourths, I'm sorry, 3 over um, 5, which is 0 0.60. So that's the probability that Miko will be punctual and will obtain a high test score. Okay. Okay, next, before we move to the next formula of probability, let us define what is meant by independent events. So two events, A and B, are independent if the occurrence of event A does not affect the occurrence of event B and vice versa. So two events, A and B, are independent if either the probability of B given A is just probability of B, or the probability of A given B is just probability of A. So from these two equation, equations, it tells us, or it tells us that uh, in here, in the first one, that the occurrence of A doesn't matter. So whether A occurred or not, the P of B given A is simply P of B. So similarly, whether B occurred or not, then the P probability of A given B is simply probability of A. Okay, and of course, that um, it's defined that the probability of A and probability of B should not be equal to zero. Okay, so let's have examples or some situations that are uh, independent or some events that are independent. Consider the experiment of tossing a coin twice. Now, the first toss of the coin, no, event A, does not affect the outcomes of the second toss. Now, why is that so? Now, because let's say in the first toss, we obtained a tail. What are the odds of getting a tail when we toss a coin? Now, the odds is one half or 50%. Now, if we toss the coin for the second time, will the probability of getting a tail change? Now, the answer is no. No, it's still one half or 0.5. So regardless, no, regardless whether the first toss uh, resulted into a head or a tail, but the chance that we're getting a tail in the second toss will still be one half. So there is no change in the probability. So thus, getting a tail on the first toss and getting a tail on the second toss are examples of independent events. Okay? Okay, so what's the formula? No? What's the multiplicative rule formula whenever A and B are mutually, uh, whenever A and B are independent events. So if two events A and B are independent, then the probability of the intersection of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied to the probability of B. Now this formula actually came from the multiplicative rule in formula number five, which states that the probability of the intersection is equal to the probability of A multiplied to the probability of B given A. But since we know that A and B are independent events, then this thing here will simply be probability of B. So that's why we have this formula. So if you know that two events are independent, then the probability of the intersection of those two independent events is just the product of the probabilities of 
each of the events. Okay, so let's have an example. A small town has one fire engine and one ambulance available for emergencies. The probability that the fire engine is available when needed is 0 0.98, and the probability that the ambulance is available when called is 0 0.92. So find the probability that both the ambulance and the fire engine will be available. So in this problem, there are two events. The first is the event that the fire engine is available. So we can represent this by F. While the second event is that uh, the ambulance is available, so we can represent this by A. And we're tasked to find out the probability that both the ambulance and the fire engine will be available. So the both means intersection. So we're looking for the probability of A, availability of the ambulance, and F, which is the availability of the fire engine. Now, it's obvious that the fire engine would be available even though the ambulance will not be available, no, and vice versa. No? If the ambulance is, is available, uh, it, the availability of the ambulance is not affected by the availability of the fire engine, no, and actually vice versa. So we say that the availabilities of the fire engine and the ambulance are independent events. So which means that this intersection formula will just be P of A multiplied to P of F. Now I'm sorry about this. So P of A times P of F. So what's the probability of, of the availability of the ambulance? That's 0.92. And then we multiply this to the probability that the fire engine is available, which is 0 0.98. So using your calculators, you're going to get 0 0.9016. Okay? So these are the three formulas, which are called the conditional probability and the multiplicative rules for dependent and independent events. Now, in the next video, we shall tackle the last formula for probability and the last formula for chapter five, which is the base formula.